church, I just feel God saying, just at this moment, just take, just where you are, just settle down. We live in a busy world that is fighting for our attention every second of every day. And I just feel God saying right now, just relax, just focus on me. Focus on me. Don't worry about the person who's sitting next to you. Don't worry about what's happening around you. Just focus on me. We focus on you, God. That's why we came here this morning, Lord, to worship you, Jesus. God, is where we find rest at your feet, Lord, is where we find restoration, Lord. We can cast our cares and our burdens upon you, Jesus. You're the Savior. We cast it all on you, Lord. We hear for you.
because your word is true. You said heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will remain forever. We thank you, Father God, for the faithfulness, for the goodness of your word. Thank you, Lord. You never fail us. Thank you, God, for your faithfulness. Thank you, Jesus. You are so good and we love you so much. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Father God. Honor and glory, praise be to you in the most high God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It is so good to be in God's presence, amen. You can take your seats in this attitude of worship. You know, it's, it's so amazing when you, you worship God and you just say, thank you, God, and I worship you. And, but when you say, I love you, it just does something, right? It's amazing. So it is my privilege and it's my honor to share the word with you as we receive the Lord's offering this morning. And um, I'm going to read a couple of verses from Mark the book of Mark in the New Testament from chapter 12. Now, in this passage of scripture, it tells us the account of the Pharisees and the Sadducees who came to Jesus and they tried to trick him into incriminating himself by asking him about tax. Tax is always a very controversial issue and it's very easy to incriminate yourself talking about tax. But, uh, in their asking of his opinion on tax, I'm gonna read from verse 15. So Jesus says this, he says, but Jesus knew their hypocrisy. And he says, why are you trying to trap me? He asked, bring me a denarius, which is a coin, and let me look at it. So they brought him the coin and he asked them, whose image is this and whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then Jesus said to him, Give back to Caesar what is due to Caesar and to God what is God's. And they were amazed. So they asked Jesus a question and instead of answering the question, he asks another question. And it's a good question to pay attention to. You see, if you look at coins, if you have a coin, if you've got money in your hand, the image on that coin or in the image of the money is generally the president or the emperor or an emblem of the government, okay? But we, people, you and me, we are made in God's image and we bear the image of God. So Jesus says, look at this coin, it's got the image of the emperor, give to Caesar, what is due to Caesar? But you, you bear the image of God you need to give to God what is due God. We have to give ourselves. Everything that God planted within us, everything that God breathed within us when He gave us life, that is what is due to God. We need to give God all that we have, all that we are, all that we do, everything, our thoughts, our words, everything, our lives, our energy. You see, the devil still plays this trick. He likes to distract us, we see. He still asks, he still makes us ask that question. Why should I give money to God? Why should I pay tax? Why should I, why should I give into the offering? They don't need my hundred rand, my thousand rand, whatever you give. He likes to distract us with things like houses and cars and clothes and brands and nice things. Do you know none of those things bear the image of God? When you go to your house, there's no image of God on your house. If the devil can get you to doubt who you belong to and whose image you bear, he can get into your head and he can really distract you from the things that Jesus came to give us, that Jesus paid with his life. Jesus came to give us abundant life. If the devil can get us to question whose image we bear, he can get us to live an unabundant life. Is that a word, unabundant? But that's his trick. 
and we need to be wary of the wiles of the devil. We need to constantly remind ourselves of this, that God created us to be in key areas, just like God. He created us to be in key areas, to act like God, to do like God. All God's creative power, He placed within us. We bear His image. So this morning, if you have money in your hand, or if you have a bank card, or your phone with your bank app, just take a look at it. Which image is on that thing? Okay? Now, just take a look at yourself. Take a look at your hand. You are made in the image of God. You bear the image of God. Therefore, give to God what is due God, and give to Caesar what is due Caesar. Amen. We can take up the offering. Just uh, as, as we prepare to give, let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord. You are so much bigger than we can ever imagine or think or dream or pray, Lord. I thank you for every single person that gives into your kingdom, that gives of themselves to you. Lord, I thank you that you consider us faithful, that you give us things. Lord, and we thank you and we give back to you, Lord, what we have, what we are, we give you our time, our talent, our treasure. We give it all to you, Lord. We withhold nothing. It is yours. Father God, I thank you that you bless. Your word says that you bless what we put our hands to. You prosper us, whatever we do. I thank you, Lord, in this time of famine in the world that we will not keep our eyes on the world. We'll keep our eyes on you because you are the God that's bigger than anything that we face. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, you do miracles, financial miracles, physical miracles, emotional miracles, spiritual miracles. We know you are a way maker, miracle working God. And we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. You can just uh, for a minute take a look at our overhead screen. We've got a few announcements on Grace News and just putting your attention to the Bible School ad. It is not too late to join. If you feel God's calling on your life, please come along on Tuesday evening and uh, God will do amazing things. He changes your life through His Word. It changes us and it changes things. Amen. Church, we are so thankful to those of you who've decided to become monthly contributors to our REACH Foundation. Now we've set a goal this year to get 350 people giving towards this initiative, as this will help us meet budget for various outreaches as well as weekly feeding schemes. Church, once again, thank you so much for your generous hearts. We really appreciate it. Grace Place Bible School is getting ready to start the academic year and our in-person classes will begin Tuesday the 16th of February so it's not too late to sign up. If you'd like to join or re-register for the 2021 year then please email us at info at Grace Place or call us in the number that appears on your screen now and we will send a form your way. So to all students we will see you for live lectures at Bible School on the 16th of February. Sign up today. Let's just sing that once more. It is well with my soul. All these distractions, let's just put them aside. It doesn't matter. It is well. Just where you're sitting, let the worship team just minister the song. With my soul.
we declare that it is well with our soul. It is well, Lord. It is well. It is well. I just can't shake this, and I believe, actually, it's somebody that's here over this last week, I think, or maybe the last two weeks, or very recently, you've been deeply betrayed by someone. Just for this moment, can I ask everyone here in this place here, just to keep your eyes closed for a moment. And I'm just gonna look. And if that's you, I just keep, it just keeps coming up again and again. Somebody here has been deeply betrayed. If that's you, something's happened, it's hurt you. No one's looking, just raise your hand. I'm not gonna call you to the front. But if that person is here, just raise your hand. Someone has done something to you. It's hurt you. You didn't expect it. And it's happened. Anyone? Well, maybe this is for someone online. I just really felt that it was for someone here. I didn't see any hands go up. So maybe it's for someone who's going to be watching this online. And I just believe the Lord is saying this. That even though you have been deeply betrayed, God says, guard your heart. Guard your heart. Because if you can guard your heart, God will take you to the next level in your life. You will not sit where you are. God will elevate you to that next step, to that next place, to higher heights in your life. If you will guard your hearts and watch what you say about what has happened, watch what you say about that person who has done wrong. Watch your attitude and watch what's been going on because the Lord is saying if you can do that and protect your heart, protect your mind and speak life rather than death, before you know it, that hurt will be gone, restoration will take place, and you'll find yourself in a place that only God can put you in, and you'll give Him the glory for that. So whether that's someone here, you were too shy to raise your hand, or somebody who's watching, just receive that. But I do know there is someone that is feeling that way, who is watching this, or will watch this today. Father, as we hear Your Word, we know, Lord, that Your Word changes us. And today, Lord, may we be changed from the inside out. May we hear your word and see it in a different way to maybe how we've been seeing it. May we see the truth of your word and understand that we have a part to play when it comes to the armor of God, your armor, Lord, the armor you've given us. And Father, may we, as we're seeking this missing piece, Lord, as we're on this quest to finding the final piece of this puzzle, that Lord, you'll instill in our hearts the things that we need to do for ourselves today. Lord, we thank you that we, few of us can be gathered here together. We know that wherever anyone is, whether they're watching online, whether they're here, Lord, that you are there. You are here in the midst of us. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the power of your transforming word. And have your way now in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Well, good morning again. This has been quite a morning. We've just, for the first time, had at least 50 people in church since last year, and then all of these things happen, but it doesn't matter, it's here to distract, and we will not be distracted. Thank you, guys. God bless. Don't you have a wonderful worship team and a wonderful team working in the background? These things happen, don't they? Yes, let's give them a hand, it's great. You know, the live streaming we're doing has just all been learned in-house, and they've done an incredible job. So when things go wrong, we all have, everyone's got to sort of scramble, but you know, we just trust that as we learn more about it, it'll become easier and these things won't happen. But I know that nonetheless, whatever happens, we are here and uh, people will get to hear the message and I know lives will still be changed nonetheless because God is good and His Word will not return empty. It will not return void. And so we just trust in that. So for those of you who have been either watching online or those of you who may have been here, we've been on this quest of finding the final piece, the missing piece. And I started out this series three weeks ago by speaking about the frustration of building a puzzle, and when you come to the end of building that puzzle and having a piece missing, there is great frustration because you've spent hours on building this puzzle and you come to the part that actually completes the puzzle, and because you don't have it, you almost can't do anything with that puzzle except break it up and, you know, you probably won't even build it again because you know there's a piece missing. And when it comes to what we're speaking about over the last few weeks, the armor of God, so often there's something missing that we actually don't realize is part of the armor of God. And we're getting to that. We'll actually get to it next week. But 
we're going to find out about another two pieces of this armor. And as we read through it, many people feel like there's only six pieces, but actually there are seven parts of this armor. And next we're going to see how everything just ties in because of one thing. And as I was meditating on it this morning, I almost thought like, that's, I would love to share that with you today, but it's going to wait till next week because there are things that we need to get to, the pieces we need to put in place so we can understand how everything in our lives is tied up. You know, we're living in times where we need victory in our lives. We need to overcome. But without the armor of God in our lives, it's going to become very, very difficult. So I'm going to read from our text scripture, which is found in Ephesians chapter 6. I'm going to read the verses we read a few weeks ago, and then I'm going to read what we're going to speak about today. And the Bible says this, Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth. These are parts of the armor. And if you weren't here, you can go and watch online. Go to our, our YouTube page, Grace Place Church, and you can watch it. But stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth. I love the way the Bible says, first of all, stand. The enemy's going to come, and he's going to try and knock us over. He's going to try and defeat us. But as long as we're standing, we're good. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. So number one was the belt of truth. The second one was the breastplate of righteousness. And the next piece was having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We spoke about that last week. Wherever we go, we need to make sure that we're not fighting one another because our battle is not with flesh and blood. There is a battle that's going on in the heavenlies, in the spiritual realm, with wicked, uh, wicked forces in high places. And so we're not fighting one another, and that's what we often do. We are fighting something else. There is a, a greater war there, a spiritual war. We're fighting for people's lives. We shouldn't be fighting with people, but rather for people. And these shoes that we have should take the gospel of peace wherever we go. We shouldn't be always looking for a fight, but looking to bring peace. Then verse 16 and 17, the next two that we're going to look at. Above all, taking the shield of faith with, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of of salvation. I want to speak about both of these two pieces of the puzzle, these two pieces of the armor together, because I feel that they really tie in with each other, especially when it comes to the fiery darts of the enemy. There is a purpose and a reason for having the armor of God. It's not just so that we can look good or feel good about ourselves. You know, I, th I think I spoke about this in the first, when we opened, that, you know, some people wake up in the morning and it's fine. If you pray a prayer and say, Lord, I, I put the, uh, the breastplate of righteousness on up, and, and you physically, not physically, but you're just praying this prayer and you're saying, this is what you do. You know that the armor is something we shouldn't have to put on every morning and take off every night. It's something that we should live by all the time. Do you know, there's an enemy out there to kill, steal, and to destroy, and he doesn't care what you're going through. He doesn't care whether you're sleeping or awake. He'll want to attack whenever he wants. He wants to destroy the lives of God's people. But we have great news for Jesus came to give us life more abundantly. And so as we look at these two pieces of the armor, the shield of faith and the helmet of salvation, we see that they are there to protect us. So let's just have a look at the shield of faith first. Uh, I'm sure, especially the guys here, when you were younger, you would have a shield and you played sword fights and, and you had your shield and your shield protected you, whatever that shield was or whatever it represented. But you know that the armor that the, 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 the Roman soldier had that Paul was likening this all to, that shield was quite complex. It was made of wood that was impenetrable. It was made of leather. It was made of canvas. It was hard. It was made out of steel. And what they would do before they were going to battle, they would even dip it in water. So when the enemy would fire their fiery, dart, their, 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 their fiery darts and their, and their um, weapons at them, it would extinguish the water. And it, extinguished, it would extinguish, extinguish the flame. I'm going to slow down, okay? <laughs> I saw the time and I thought, oh my goodness, but it's fine. I'm slowing down now. Uh, and it extinguished that flame. And we have been given the shield, and the Bible says it is a shield of faith. That means we need to be living a life of faith. Even though we see things happening around us, we need to look at God's Word and live that life of faith. If we're not living a life of faith, then technically speaking, we do not have that shield of faith protecting us. And if you think about it, the shield of faith is something that protects us. It's almost like there's a double barrier to us. When we spoke about the righteousness, the breastplate of righteousness, 
It protects our vital organs. It protects our heart, our lungs, the vital organs. Do you know that even before the enemy can get to the breastplate of righteousness, he needs to get past the shield of faith? It's almost like we have a double barrier protection. And so when we have that shield of faith up, we have this protection against the enemy who is trying to defeat us. Because if you think of armor, if you think of a soldier, it's normally because there is a time of war. And so our lives are in a battle. It's not a physical battle. It is a spiritual battle. And when we lift up that shield of faith, we are declaring that we trust God, even though everything else is falling down around us, we are trusting God. Now, I think we all know about faith. At Grace Place, we've spoken about this a lot. We know what faith is. We know that um, without faith, it is impossible to please God. There is a scripture as well that says that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And so right now, as we are hearing the word of God, our faith is building. As we are hearing the word of God, we're saying, I have the shield of faith. And when those darts come my way, I have the shield of faith to protect me. And should I be tired and my shield goes down, I have the breastplate of righteousness, which protects me. And that's why all these pieces of the armor are vital, and we need them all together to work. We can't just say, oh, I like the shoes, I'm going to put them on, and that's all I'm going to wear. Because you're in danger. You are vulnerable. There is an enemy out there and he's trying to destroy the lives of God's people. He is trying to take away our passion for what God is doing. He's trying to uh, distract us and there's many other things that he's trying to do. And if we allow him to do that, we start failing. And so we need to lift up the shield of faith. We need to speak words of faith. When things are going wrong, we need to say, Lord, I know I'm in the middle of this battle because we're all going to face battles. If you think you've just finished a battle, there's another one that's going to come. And in that battle, we need to say, Lord, I lift up the shield of faith and I declare that you are always with me. I declare that you never leave me nor forsake me. I declare that the path that I have for, that the path that you have for my life is a path that will lead me. Your word will shine a light on this path and I will go where I need to go. I will step in this battle and step where I need to step so that I can be victorious. And so when we declare God's word and we speak God's word, faith begins to arise in us and we see God's hand at work in our lives. Do you know, as I was looking at the shield and, and just having a look at what it actually does, we each have the shield of faith. Now just picture all of us here. We have the shield of faith and the enemy's going and we put it up and we, and we block and, we, and the fiery dart comes and we stop it and it doesn't affect us. But you know, one of the other reasons they had a shield of faith back then was because together they were even more powerful. And what the, the soldiers would do is they would get that shield and they would join it together. I'm sure you've seen in some of these movies, you know, when, when there's arrows flying, flying your way, uh, the, 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 one, the, the army would then just all of a sudden put their shields up and protect everybody. Do you know that that's another reason we have the shield? So often, like I said last week, we as God's children do not behave like God's children. We're so ready to kick someone when they're down. We're so ready to judge people when they do something wrong. We're so busy, ready to criticize people because of the wrongdoings. We're so easy and, and quick to say things that we shouldn't. And instead of encouraging others and one another, we're almost kicking them down. And the Bible says if we could just put up that shield of faith, all of us, we can actually stand next to our brother and our sister and we can help protect them from the onslaught in their lives. And so when we stand together in unity, this becomes a powerful thing where we're able to withstand the wiles of the enemy. We're able to withstand the tricks that he will try and bring into our lives. And so the shield of faith is extremely important. How do we activate the shield of faith? We trust God's word. If we're going to believe those darts that are coming our way, our faith gets deactivated and we no longer have that shield of faith. And so it's important for you and I to win this battle. We need to acknowledge that there is a shield of faith. And when I wake up in the morning and I pray and I say, Lord, I believe that I have the shield of faith. I specifically need to, in every situation, in every circumstance, be able to speak those words of faith over what I'm facing. Imagine that. You see, we get up and we'll say, oh Lord, I pray for the shield of faith and I thank you. We don't even know what we're really praying for, but we, we feel like now we, we, we are kitted out with the armor of God. But you know that when we face the situation, the soldier doesn't just stand there and go, okay, shoot your arrows and we got our shield down here. No, there's physical battle and we need to say things in order to win this battle. When the enemy comes with a thought or something, we need to speak God's word and that's speaking faith. And so this is how this basically ties in with the helmet of salvation. We have the shield of faith, but we also have the helmet of salvation. 
You know, the helmet of salvation is the first point of protection to your mind. But if you think about it, before the fiery dart even hits your mind, you can lift your shield and protect yourself. So again, it becomes a double barrier of protection to our minds. That's why we should be able to sing, it is well with my soul. It is well with what's going on in my mind. It is well with what's going on in my life. And when we can truly and honestly say that, we truly have the helmet of salvation on. Now, the helmet of salvation is so important because if you think about it, without your helmet, one blow to the head can be devastating. It can be terrible. And so we need to have it on. You know, I'm reminded of a story that happened to me when I was much, much younger. I was in school. I was uh, um, a kid. And I used to race BMXing. I don't know if anyone here ever raced BMXing or had a BMX. It tries to come back all, always, but it's sort of, it's there, but it's not so, so um, in the forefront. And when I was younger, we, my family, most of us, we raced BMXing. And the one day in Bloemfontein, uh, one of the things you do in Bloemfontein and places like Valcom, where I come from, is stock car racing. Anybody ever heard of stock car racing? Maybe some of you haven't, maybe you have. I don't think my kids have ever even been, but it's basically cars that race around a track on a dirt track, and you watch, and the best thing of it all is when you see them crash and hit each other, you know, cars hit each other, and, and you know, uh, that's always a lot of fun. I enjoyed that part of it in any case. We were invited as a BMX club to go and show off our BMX club around the track, and uh, it was a lot of fun, and we were just trying to, you know, get people to join this club, and at the end of the whole procession, we had to go back to... to to where the cars were and things like that. And I can't remember why, but I sort of stayed behind. And everyone went off in the club and they, they, they were doing the thing. I don't remember why I stayed behind, but I did. And I realized that I had to go and get with the club. And so I decided to take a shortcut. So I got on my bike. It was dusk. It was getting dark. And I went through this little, like, treed area. And uh, as I was riding through, um, the trees got quite low. So I thought, OK. I'll just duck down on my bike, you know, and I, you know, you, you just duck down and just go under the, under the, and the next thing I realized, and I was going quite fast because I wanted to catch them, the next thing I saw were stars. And I was lying on the floor, and I just looked in front of me, and I just kept thinking, don't faint. There are two times in my life I've seen stars, and there's two times I told myself, don't faint. Don't faint. If you faint, no one's going to find you here. Just don't faint. Whatever you do, Mark, don't faint. Don't faint. They won't find you. And then I looked at my bike and it was in the road. And I thought, get your bike before someone rides over, you know, drives over your bike. And in all this panic uh, with stars and days and a big bump over here, uh, very, <laughs> I got to my bike and tried to act as if nothing happened. You know, you know when you hurt yourself, nothing happened. What's that bump on your head? No, I don't know. Nothing happened. You know, like everything's fine. What bump, you know? It's just you find, and then you go around the corner, and you cry a little bit, oh, this is so sore. You know, that kind of a thing. And I just thought, when I was preparing this, I thought, imagine if I actually had my helmet on. I didn't have my helmet on. Imagine if I had it, it would have hit my helmet, and I would have actually been fine. And so that's why this helmet of salvation, Pastor Joan, is very, very important to have on our heads. Because when there is a blow, when there is a fiery dart that comes our way, it will protect us. We won't have these bumps all over. We won't have a black eye because this, 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 this uh, piece of armor actually came right across the front of the face, down the nose. It protected the whole face. And so it was an important part of the armor to have, just like every other part of the armor. This armor is crucial, this piece of armor. The Bible says this, and this is where this all ties in. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 5, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. As we have found that these pieces of armor protect our lives, so the helmet of salvation protects us from those fiery darts. The Bible says we are to bring every single thought captive. Every fiery dart that might come our way, everything that somebody else might say about us, every thought that we think about ourselves, we need to bring it captive and bring it into the obedience of the knowledge of Christ. If it ties up with God's word, we accept it. If it doesn't, we don't accept it. 
And so when we put this helmet of salvation on, basically what we're doing is we are working out our salvation. Yes, we give our lives to Jesus. We give our, our, our lives to Him and we accept the sacrifice that He made and He took our sin and, and He gave us new life. But as we walk this road, we've got to work out the salvation. And if we don't have the helmet of salvation on, we're going to be so distracted by what's happening. The enemy will try and knock us down and we won't be able to work out the next step or what God is trying to do in our lives because we're so busy fighting these arrows and these fiery darts that are coming our way. In fact, the Bible even says there is a fiery trial that is set before us. I think it's in the book of First Peter. Even in the fiery trials where the fiery darts come, we are to stand and to trust God through them all because they will come. There is an enemy who knows what your weaknesses are. He knows what, what, what may try and devastate your life and he's going to throw those darts. He's going to fire those darts. He's going to make sure there is a fiery trial in your life. And if we don't have the helmet of salvation on and we're thinking the wrong things, it will begin to weaken us as soldiers of Christ. It will begin to weaken us in our faith. It will begin to distract us. There's nothing worse than being distracted by things around us because then we're not focusing on what God wants us to do. It will begin to confuse us. Like, I don't know, is this God's plan for my life or is this God's plan for my life? Or I'm at this crossroads in my life and I don't know which way to go. It's simply because we don't have the helmet of salvation on and we're allowing what other people say in our lives to dictate where we're going. That's one of the biggest mistakes. God says something and then we want confirmation from six people. But God has already said it. Think about it. If you know in your spirit that God has said something to you, do it. We don't always need 500 people to confirm it. And if Pastor Mark doesn't say something at the church, then, then it's not for me, Lord. You know, we've all done it. I've done it. We do this. But at the end of the day, we need to hear what God is saying. And if we have that helmet of salvation on and that breastplate of righteousness and the shield of faith, we will be protecting those vital, we will be protecting our minds. We'll be moving on in the plans and the purposes of God. We won't get discouraged. We won't get weak. We won't get confused. We won't get distracted. And so often we're not walking around with this helmet on and the darts come. And you ask yourself, why am I thinking about this right now? Why is this in my life right now? Why am I thinking of stealing why am I thinking of lying? Why am I thinking of that lustful thought? Where is it coming from? Why am I entertaining these things that are going on? Why do I think that, you know, when we look at our lives, we go, well, you know, if anyone gets left out, it'll be me. Why do we think those things? We become lonely. You know, I'll never find a husband. I'll never find a wife. I'll never do well at school. I'll never get into university. I'll never be able to study. I'll never be able to do what I do. And those are fiery darts that either the enemy is sending, maybe people around you are sending your way. And as long as we don't have that helmet of salvation on, we're going to believe those fiery darts that are coming our way. But God has plans and purposes for every single one of us. And we only really get to understand and know and be focused on where God is taking us when we put this helmet of salvation on, understanding that we have been saved from a life of sin. We have been saved from a life of death, that we have eternal life. And then working out and walking out the salvation in our lives as we're trusting God to take us to the next step. But what we're doing is we're filling our minds with the lies and the arrows and the, and the fiery darts of the enemy and we're believing his lie. He is the father of lies. So why are we believing a lie rather than the truth of God's word? God's word speaks of so many good things. His word is full of promises. But yet we believe the lie. You know, this week, Clint Sampson, he was hijacked on, on Thursday. And he was kidnapped, he was, held, he was sort of held ransom, I suppose, for two hours, taken out into the bush at Bronco Sprayed somewhere. And uh, he'll share his testimony, I'm sure we'll get it on camera, it's actually, it would be a great testimony. But to cut a long story short, when I spoke to him on Friday, he said, you know, without the armor of God, I don't know how it would have gone. Without him knowing that he could have faith, trusting God in this terrible situation where he thought he wouldn't see his family again. Where he was kept, held captive for two hours and then tied up and said, well, if you can get loose in 15 minutes, good for you. If you can't, sorry, hope somebody finds you sometime. And he said, you know what, if I didn't have that, and if I didn't have the word of God, and being able to speak and believe these words and cover your mind, have the helmet of salvation on where you're speaking and believing that this is gonna be okay and I'm gonna see my family again, things would have been very different. 
And it's amazing even in that situation how God opened doors for him. And he'll share that testimony. I don't want to say anything. But this is the thing. When we go into difficult situations and we're in a fiery trial, whatever that may be, or fiery darts are coming our way, are we prepared for it? We can't quickly get on our knees and say, Oh, Lord, Lord, get to our beds. Where's my... Yeah. Please, I put on the helmet of salvation. We don't even know what we, the helmet of salvation is when we are working out our salvation, understanding the, the shield of faith is where we are co constantly confessing, confessing. Words of faith, hearing the word of God. That helmet of salvation, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind. We can only renew our minds when we have that helmet of salvation on. Otherwise, we're going to be distracted by everything else. And so when we put that helmet on, our minds are renewed. And even though it looks negative, even though it looks bad, even though it looks like the end, we can continue, continuously believe God's Word through every single situation. I want you to open your Bibles to one final scripture. It's found in Philippians 4, verse 8 and 9. It's a scripture I continuously try to memorize. But I always get the words mixed up. So I'm going to read it because there is an order to these words um, about the thoughts that we think. And I believe that if we can get this right, we will be part of the army of Christ where we're walking around with not only the shield of faith and the breastplate of righteousness and the belt of truth and the shoes shod for, for the, the gospel of peace, but we will also have the helmet of salvation on. And this is what the Bible says about and we can apply this to the helmet of salvation. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of a good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. If we have the helmet of salvation on, we will be meditating on these things. When the enemy comes and he strikes us or blows us with some thought or something that we know will weaken us, we have the helmet of salvation on. We're thinking about good things. The thought may come, but let it just go. It doesn't have to penetrate. It doesn't have to get in. It doesn't have to make our souls unwell. But this is what happens to many of us. I'm going to read the scripture. Tell me if this is the scripture. Whatever things are a lie, whatever things bring fear, whatever things are unholy, whatever things are dirty, Whatever things are ugly, whatever things bring a bad report, the problem is we think on them. It's exactly opposite to what God's Word is saying. We love to hear a bad report sometimes, especially when it's somebody we hope gets that bad report, somebody that has done something to us, someone that's betrayed us, like I spoke about earlier, someone that's, that's hurt us. Oh, I don't wish them anything good, but I wish, don't wish them anything bad either. In other words, you know, it's fine. We... we waiting for that bad report. We don't think of things that are holy, but that are ugly, that are not pure. Instead of trusting God through all of this, we prefer to live in fear. We read the news constantly. I know Pastor Sean spoke about this a while ago. We read the news, and there's nothing wrong with reading the news and knowing what's going on, but we read it to the point where we are encapsulated by the news and what's going on, and everything becomes negative and then we wonder why we walk in fear, but God's word says, no, we need to be noble. Whatever things are noble, that's what we must think of. You see, when we look at fear, the ugly things in life, the thoughts, the dirtiness, the lies, the bad reports, these are fiery darts that the enemy is throwing our way. And whatever thoughts we are thinking is placing us on a path for our future. You know, the thing that you think about the most is planning out your future. So let me ask, what are you thinking about a lot? Are you thinking about, I wonder when I will get sick? Are you thinking about, I wonder when I'm going to lose my job? Are you thinking about, I wonder when I'm going to give in to that temptation again? Are you thinking, well, you know, I keep getting on this road and then I slip back and I, 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 I drink again or I take drugs again. And you're thinking to yourself the whole time, I wonder when this is going to happen. As long as we're thinking thoughts like that, it's going to happen because our thoughts are taking us into our future. What we're thinking about ourselves is going to take us there. If somebody at school has said, you'll amount to nothing and you've believed it, you probably have to yourself because you believe it. But if we can change that thought and say, Lord, I know they said I'm going to amount to nothing, but today I declare, your word is true. You've placed me on this earth for a purpose. And then nothing is my something. 
They may say nothing, I say I will amount to something. It may not be their something, but it'll be the something that you have for me, ready for my life. And so we need to begin to believe the word of God by putting on that helmet of salvation, by raising that shield of faith and not allowing the enemy to bring those thoughts in that fiery trial that you are facing. So today, just where you're sitting, I want you to bow your heads again and close your eyes. This scripture finishes off, and I'm going to read it to you. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these you must do, and the God of peace will be with you. Do you know, we're told what we should do to think on good things. Then the Bible goes on to say there are things we need to do about it. There needs to be an action that we place. And that is what the armor of God is all about. It's about an action that we do in order to show that we have these pieces of armor on. I will stand in faith. I will not back off. I will believe God's word over whatever anyone else says. I will bring peace into a situation that is not peaceful. I will put on that belt of truth and speak the truth and not lie and deceive. And because I'm the righteousness of God, I can have that breastplate on and live out this righteousness. Be good, do what is right. So as much as we're told what to do, we need to act on it. And the Bible says when we act on these things, the peace of God will be a part of our lives and how we all need that peace how we all need it in our lives. And so today, while your head's about, I want you to do an inner check. Where are your thoughts right now? It could also be something just random. Maybe all you think about all day are things that aren't going to get you anywhere. Maybe it's playing the next game, going for the next bicycle ride. Maybe your thoughts are focused on, as I said earlier, when am I going to fail? When am I going to lose my job? We need to put that helmet of salvation on and begin to change our thoughts. There was something that I've been saying quite regularly. And obviously I wasn't listening to the Holy Spirit, so the Holy Spirit spoke to my wife and I listened to her. <laughs> and last night I remember sitting on the kitchen counter, it was quite late, and I said something, she said, you know you've got to stop saying that. And so immediately I felt disqualified to get here and preach. And we really need to do a heart search. Because the best person to hear from is the Holy Spirit for Him to show you what needs to change. And maybe you're saying things about yourself. You believe they're true. Why don't you go and look at God's Word and see who you really are? And those words that seem so true, that are negative in your life, is generally a lie from the enemy, from Satan. It's a lie from someone else who might be jealous of you, who does not want to see you succeed. Maybe your parents even said something and it was just once that they ever said it and it was a phrase and they obviously didn't think of what they were saying, but you've taken it to heart and you've believed it. And maybe you've never heard them say it again, but you've believed it. Put it aside and say, Lord, I know what people have said. And maybe by mistake they said it, but it's affected me. Today I choose to believe what you say about me. And I choose to live up to what you expect me to be. Not what others think I'm supposed to be. Lord, today we all are here, whether we're watching online, whether we're here in the church, we are here. with our minds, with our thoughts. Lord, you know what we are thinking even before. You know what's going on in our lives. You know the struggles we've faced, but today, Lord, we declare that as we put on the helmet of salvation, as we raise that shield of faith, that we will not be people who are defeated. We will not be people who are distracted and are weary, but Lord, we will be people who have stood up, ready for any battle, Ready for, ready for any fiery dart. Ready knowing that you are there to protect us. And Lord, as we trust you, we believe what you say about us, 
We believe what you say over the situation. We believe your report over anyone else's. And we believe that in the end, you have made a way for every single one of us to be with you in eternity. And those are the things we hold on to. Here on earth, we hold on to your love, to your grace. To think, Lord, that you would forgive us when we struggle to forgive ourselves and when others don't. That you forgive us. This is how much you love us. And this is how much potential you see in every single one of us. So today, Lord, we declare that we will hear your word. Speak those words of faith. And we will put on that helmet of salvation where we're working out each step as we go along. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just while you're there in this attitude of just quietness, Maybe you're watching and you've never given your life to Jesus. Maybe you're here this morning and you never have. Or maybe you've turned from Him and you're no longer serving Him. You're no longer following in His ways. Today I want to give you an opportunity to give your life to Jesus. Wherever you are, if you call upon the name of Jesus, the Bible says you will be saved. Because He is the only one who can save us. He is the only one, God's only Son, who came to this earth and died for us and took our sin upon His body so that we do not have to face eternal death, even though we will face physical death from here. We enter into our home, our spiritual home, heaven. So today you may be thinking, man, my life is just nothing right now, or I don't have purpose, I don't know where I'm going. It all starts with knowing Jesus. So if there's anyone here you want me to pray for you to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, or maybe online, wherever you are, I want you to pray this prayer and declare Him as Lord of your, of your life. If you've already done this, you can pray this prayer again, and let's declare this together. Say, my Heavenly Father, I thank You for saving me and for loving me and for taking what I deserved and giving me what I did not deserve, for giving me love, for forgiving me and helping me to live this life that I need to live. So today, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Have your way in my life because from today, I follow you and I serve you. Please lead me to my destiny. Amen. Lord, whoever's prayed this prayer today, I pray, Lord, that it wasn't just prayed in vain or just because there was pressure, but it was prayed because their hearts were torn, tur turned towards you. And so, Lord, as this prayer has been prayed, we ask, I ask, Lord, that you touch their lives, that you bring the right people across their paths, and that they flourish in the way that they go. In Jesus' name, amen. So those of you who may have said the prayer, maybe you're here or even online, please get in touch with us. If you're here, come and see Belinda or I. If not, if online, please get in touch with us. Our details will appear on the screen. And I just uh, know that we'll help you on this incredible journey that you're on. So before we close the service, I just want to say one or two things. For those of you who are watching, I'm sure you've heard that we have a couple of people at church. Uh, what we're going to be doing is, you know, we have our, our worship team serving every Sunday. And when they're here, their family is not here. So we've invited their families to join us. And then when there's a few seats left, there's normally about 20 to 25 seats left, we are just inviting people. So you will get an invite within the next couple of weeks just to come to church and we'd love to see you here. Uh, so we have a few people here this week and next week we'll get different people just so that you can all come along and enjoy the service with us. And then just, uh, I just feel I need to say this as well. Our ninth birthday is coming up at the end of, uh, at the end of March. 1st of April is when we have our ninth anniversary. It also happens to be over the Easter weekend again, which is great. So what we want to do for that week, we've decided we, and I just feel I need to, uh, we need to just get this going is on the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday evening, Friday morning and Sunday, we're going to have a service every single day leading up to our birthday so that we can have different people coming from the congregation, different members of our family coming so that we can all get an opportunity to come to church 
and just have some fellowship with each other. So prepare for that for the last week of March and we'll have different pastors preaching. We'll just have some of the worship team leading us in worship. So it's going to be a wonderful time. We look forward to great things. Amen. So this week, are you ready to work out these pieces in your life so we can find out what that final piece is next week? God is good. Amen. Shall I just close in prayer? We're good? Let's close in prayer. Father, we thank you that as we leave this place, your presence goes with us. We don't want to leave without your presence. Where anyone is watching, Lord, we, they don't want to, we don't want to leave our living rooms, our lounges, our dining rooms, wherever we're watching, Lord, we don't want to leave without your presence. And so, Lord, we know that your presence goes with us. We thank you for your protection over every single one of us, over everyone that may be struggling with any kind of disease, even with COVID, Lord, we speak healing over every person. I speak faith over every person that they will not doubt or live in fear. And Father, we thank you for a blessed week, a wonderful week, as we see your greatness in our lives, as we see you leading us. Thank you for this in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone said, Amen. God bless you all.